In today's video, I want to show you guys some real-life low-light comparisons between the Osmo Action 3 and the Osmo Action 4. What's up everybody? My name is Dan. Welcome to Freely Roaming. If you're new around here, you'll find videos all about tips and tricks of full-time vehicle-based traveling. Whether it is van life, overlanding, or RVing, we spend thousands of nights while camping in our travels, so you'll find videos on how to thrive while living off the grid. Lastly, I'd love to share with you my decades-long experience in content creation as an adventure travel creator. Our family has been doing exactly that since 2008, and we started this channel to share with you all that we've learned during that time. If you're interested, you can find our travel vlog channel at youtube.com slash mollymish. So I've had a few people ask me to compare specifically the low light comparison between these two cameras, the Osmo Action 3 and the Osmo Action 4. In one of my previous videos where I compared the two, there was a section about low light at the very end. But in this one, I'm gonna show you guys what a practical real life scenario is if you're using the Action 3 versus if you're using the Action 4. For about a week, my family and I went on a cruise to Mexico. And during one of the evenings, I took my Action 3 and my Action 4 out. I meandered around the cruise ship, both inside as well as outside. So in these next few upcoming clips, you guys will see exactly what the low light conditions were like and how the cameras compare side by side. I've got the camera set to a couple of pretty standard settings. One using HDR on the Action 3 and one using the standard setting on the Action 3. And on the Action 4, I use the auto setting as well as custom manual exposure setting to try to get the best footage in those conditions. Both of these cameras were also using the onboard microphone without wind reduction. As you hear in a few places in the video, there's a lot of sound from the wind on the boat as the boat was underway and the wind was quite strong. That should also give you an idea about what the microphones sound like in those conditions. What I try to do in this one is I try to show you guys what a typical situation might be like for you to use one of these cameras in a vlogging environment. If you were trying to get the best video in low light conditions using these two cameras, I would suggest putting it on the tripod and turning off rock steady because that's going to give you the best quality footage. I didn't do that in this test because this is supposed to represent a real life scenario. So without further ado, let's check out how these two cameras did. All right, so I'm doing the low light test. This is the Action 4 over here and the Action 3 over here. Let me see, do I need to change this to anything? Okay, so you can see this one is super bright right now. But the settings for both of these is 4K 30 and this one, Action 4, is D-Log M. I have it on manual exposure, 1 50th of a second and ISO 800. This one, same thing except it's D-Cine-like, 1 50th of a second and ISO 800 as well. So you're going to see as we walk out of here the lighting is going to be even more dramatic. This one's gonna get probably exposed more properly. This one will get pretty dark. So, and then the next one, I'm gonna test walking around with the same settings. Um, actually, no, I'll, I'm gonna go back to auto settings with the Action 4. And then with the Action 3, I'm gonna switch to the HDR setting, which I think is what you wanna use if you're gonna record in low light for the Action 3. All right, here we go. Ready? We'll probably have to come back. Here we are. This week we are on Navigator of the Seas, Royal Caribbean Cruise. So this is the uh, hallway of deck nine we're on the starboard side in the forward section and as you can see the action three is pretty dark we're gonna go also outside and show you guys some uh, low light footage of the action three and action four in uh, varying light environment specifically outdoors with uh, like a swimming pool maybe some deck lights uh, there's gonna be some TVs and different lighting environments around we'll see how these two cameras handle it 
Ah, here we are. We're in one of the staircases in the elevator waiting areas. Well, maybe I'll show you guys this. This is the uh, promenade of the Navigator of the Seas. We have a couple of restaurants down there, bars, more staircase. Looks decent so far. We'll take the uh, elevator down. Up. Are we going up? Oh yeah, we're going up. Going to the pool deck? Hello. Hello. Alright. Here's the elevator. Doors closing. Here's the different decks on the boat. We're going up to deck 11. Oh, 12? Well, we can just walk up and down the stairs. Deck 12. Deck 12 is fine. Doors opening. Going down. Here's deck 12, and we're going to be going outside for a little bit. Looking down at the promenade again. All right. Here we go, outdoors. There's a, one of the hot tubs. And as you can see, the Osmo Action 4 is doing a lot better in this environment. And the Osmo Action 3 is borderline unusable. And also, it's a little bit breezy, so you're getting a little bit of a, you know, a wind sounds on both of these cameras. So I'll switch back and forth between these two cameras so you can hear how they sound, how they handle windy positions. And there's music, obviously, we have to deal with. Tonight we have tropical pool party with a DJ right here. There's the uh, pool party down below. back inside again so I've got this uh, let's look out this window I got these two cameras now set up on slightly different settings the Osmo Action 4 is now on uh, ex auto exposure the ISO is 100 to 1600 so it kind of picks its own ISO the Action 3 is on HDR mode everything else being the same in HDR mode, I believe the Action 3 will go all the way up to 3200. So I think the Action 3 does best in low light in HDR mode, but I'll let you guys be the judge. So I'll go, uh, we'll go walk around, show you guys some varying light. Again, maybe we'll walk through the promenade and then come back up the other way. Oh, oh the promenade is really far down, actually. Yeah. Yeah. It's really bright down there. Yeah. We'll do the promenade later. Maybe we'll walk through the other side and then see how the low light is handled. I also noticed a significant color difference, mainly because the Osmo Action 4 is still shooting in D-Log M, which requires grading, while the HDR mode is supposed to be used as it is out of the camera. All right, it's gonna be windy and loud again.
right, now we're back in, inside, deck 12. So that's some, uh, that's two different settings for the Osmo Action 3 and Osmo Action 4. Trying to capture low light and it's probably as bright as it will be when we're inside like this. This area is pretty well lit. This is the Vitality SC Spa. Ugh. Nobody's here right now. So there you go. Here's a low light comparisons of these two action cameras from DJI. So as you can see, the Osmo Action 4 excelled at all of these conditions over the Osmo Action 3. That is to be expected though, given that they were using the exact same settings. Each one of the Osmo Action 4's pixels compared to the Osmo Action 3 is 50% bigger, which allows it to collect more light. With the Osmo Action 3, except in the extreme conditions, I thought the footage was still somewhat usable, but when it got really dark, the image just wasn't there. You will also see more ghosting artifacts in the Action 3 in the auto setting. Because in auto setting, which is the second half of the clips that I just showed you, the Osmo Action 3 will reduce the shutter speed to try to get more light in, which meant that it gave more motion blur. And couple that with Rocksteady, that's where the ghosting artifacts come from. As I said earlier in this video, to get the best low light footage you possibly can, you want to place these cameras on a tripod and turn off Rocksteady. All of the clips that I've shown in this video have been done handheld so you can know what that scenario looks like. I would love to hear your thoughts on the comparison of these two cameras in these low light conditions. Did you see anything you didn't expect? Do you think these low light videos are usable? Feel free to leave me a note in the comments to let me know what you think. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys in the next one.